out of the bridge. We have decided the cross section. <coughs> uh, if you quickly guide me uh, for the for the previous lecture, that what was the size of the girder and what were the details of the of the deck. For example, design of we are studying design of concrete uh, reinforced concrete girder bridge. In and today we have two tasks. The first task we will design the slab, and in the second task we will find out the lateral distribution. I told you that. In case of bridges, we have two types of distribution of loads. Number one is later and other is longitudinal along the length. Okay, so let me draw the cross section of your bridge. It has barrier, but it has no footpath. Yes, no footpath. And then we have So the total width of the bridge was uh, 12,000. So this was 20, how much? Yeah, 20, 200. 2200. Yeah. And the size was uh, 880. This was 880. Okay. And we have found the thickness of slab that was 200 mm, if I remember. Yeah, 200 mm. The thickness of slab is 200 mm. And this curve is 380. This distance is 380. Okay, we have decided the thickness of slab in our previous class and now we are going to check the certain conditions for empirical method and if those conditions are satisfied we are going to use the reinforcement given by that empirical method. Okay, so what are those conditions? Let's go uh, one by one. The first condition is that the effective span, the effective span should be less than equal to less than or equal to 4100. The effective span of the slab, okay? Or how much we can consider the effective span of the slab this distance? The clear span. This clear span, the first condition is that the clear span between the girders or the clear spacing between the girders it should be less than How much is that? 1750 uh, 2200 minus the size of girder, the size of girder we decided in our previous class was uh, the size of girder we decided 
400 by 50, the width and the depth was 1200? 1250? 600, 600, 700. Uh, 100, uh, yeah, that's right. Okay, so minus 450, we got 1750, and there is far less than 4100. So the condition number one is satisfied, okay. Now the second condition. The second condition is that SE, I mean this clear span over the thickness of slab. Now the second condition, the clear span of slab divided by the thickness of slab it should be greater than it should be greater than or equal to 6 and less than or equal to 16 let me check it should be yeah 6 and 18 6 and please check for our case how much is that this is the clear span How much is the thickness? 200. How much is this value? 8.75. So it is greater than or equal to 6. The second condition is also satisfied. This is the second condition. Now, the third condition. The slab depth should be greater than 175. The slab depth should be greater than 175. Greater than or equal to, so we have 200 mm. It's fine. The fifth condition, the sorry, the core, uh, the, the fourth condition, the core depth. Now, what is core depth? Core depth is basically the depth of slab minus top cover minus 60 from the further bottom. Core depth you can take, you can say H minus 60 minus 25, where H is the depth of slab and it is equal to 200. It should be greater than or equal to 100 mm. So how much is this? One one. So it is also fine. Okay. Now the next condition: the overhang with barrier. It should be. Equal. It should be more than or equal to three h. The overhang with barrier. It should be more than. It should be greater than or equal to 3H. How much is overhang in our case? Uh, 800 mm. It should be greater than or equal to? And how much is 3H? H is the thickness of slab. Now, the last condition. There is one more. The FC prime should be the FC prime should be equal to greater than or equal to 28 megapascal. How much was the 35? 35. Yeah, so we have 35, which is fine. And number seven. It is saying that if you use this method, you should provide the connectors, the shear connectors at a spacing of 600 mm center to center. So what are the shear connectors? For example, if the girder, like, like in this case, 
If the girder is a part of slab, then there is no need of shear connectors. Now, what is what is a shear connector? Shear connector, for example, you have slab and you have beam. In order to join them, we provide one bolt, one connection. Or sometimes we take the reinforcement out of the out of the girder and that reinforcement go inside the slab that is also known as shear connector okay so the shear connectors should be provided for this case yeah now if it is monolithic no need of this condition it is automatically satisfied but if it is not monolithic like the girders are not the part of slab you have to provide the shear connectors like this at every 600 mm okay so let's provide shear connectors will be provided at 600 mm so once all these conditions are satisfied now you can find out the top and bottom reinforcement and that reinforcement is uh, 0 0.570 millimeter square per millimeter width of the slab okay and for example now can I erase this part this one can I erase So after this, inshallah, we will uh, we will model the same bridge, the same bridge, the gutter bridge and the slab bridge in the computer, inshallah, in, in the SAP. So meanwhile, what you can do, you can try to manage the the recent version of SAP in your laptops. Okay, try to get the recent version of SAP in your laptops. I think in instruction analysis, I ask, I give you one, or in concrete design, I, I, I don't remember. We just, no, just, uh, just a lecture. No, not project? No. I, I give a project, maybe I think the structural analysis. So, try to get the new version of SAP from the, from, from the college, okay? In, in the lab, we have the SAP, so we will go and we will try to use it. We have the license for it, but I I want you to have the same in your laptops as well, okay? It start working on it right now, okay? Don't waste your time. Okay, so the top reinforcement, top layer.